It seems my internet does not like it when I talk about killer clowns from outer space today. Um. Oh, it leaves again. Yeah, my internet's been a bitch. I should be recording this. Who knows? Um. Anyway, heavy reference guy, he's from Russia. His family was in the gulag. I think it was the gulag. Gulag. Was it gulag? Gulag? Prison camp. <laughs> Russian prison camp for things that his father said, which was very anti-Russia. Well, according to them, anti-Russia. For all we know, you know, it was other reasons. Um, the, uh, engineer, uh, not engineer, heavy. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, which gulag? Does not say! <laughs> Does not say which gulag! Um, also, as everyone knows, Team Heavy is, like, the main face of TF2. He is the mascot, almost, of Team Fortress 2. Hell, he's going to be in the thumbnail. Um, Heavy is, like, the most well-known class when it comes to TF2, if not Scout, because, come on, Scout. So memeable. So, uh, Heavy Weapons Guy's family was in the Gulag. He has three sisters, and um, he has three sisters and a mom. They were all in the Gulag, and they escaped. This isn't part of the history I love learning. They escaped the gulag and ran away. And they live out in the middle of Serbia. They basically live out in the middle of cold, freezy tundra land. Which, uh, sorry. Ahem. According to the, to the Team Fortress wiki, which actually does have exactly where the fuck he lived. Oh, fuck, I do not speak Russian. Does Hongadizer Mountains in Kabarzoske cry USSR? I don't speak a lick of Russian, so please forgive me. <laughs> it's not Serbia. Buckshot. It's not Serbia. He lives in the. the I'm not trying to say that again. It was in the mountains. He lives in the fuck you mountains. He lives in the fuck you mountains of the former USSR. Um, he is, he is strong. He is strong like bull. He has Sasha, his favorite weapon. All his guns are named after, named after people. And I think that's not, I'm saying you said so. So, sorry, Siberia then. Siberia. Um, huh. Why aren't my redeems going off? Uh, folks, uh, we're not gonna have redeems right now. It seems my redeems are kind of sort of broken. I will fix that off camera. Um, so where was I? So, again, like I said, he ha he's basically has become a mercenary to basically fight and make money so his family can survive out in the middle of the fucking wind mountains full of bears and wolves and snow and ice and they are also technically also still on, ru on the run from the Russian baddies. The bad Russians. The bad, mean, militaristic Russians who are very, very mean. The reason why Heavy has them living out in the middle of solitution, he's very protective of his family. I don't fucking blame him. I'm starting to see some influence from my character Marshmallow all of a sudden. <laughs> um, so that happens. And fun fact, um, in the comics, which we will cover more... We get to learn more about Heavy's family, and I will get to talk about Heavy's family and get to be all joyous and happy about Heavy's family because I love Heavy's family. So that is basically the Heavy's. I think that's most of the defense covered. Um, that, I mean, that's most of the shit for the defense is covered. Um, ha -ma -na, ha -ma -na, ha uh, So now we get to cover the support classes. My bread and butter, because I do play support a lot. We will start with the man himself, the myth, the legend. <sighs> Hold on. I have to find it. I must find the best image. <laughs> we will start with the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> no, cat. no, don't do that image of Spy. Make him look a little nicer. Make him look a little nicer. <laughs> this spy. Personally, I like spy in blue. I think spy... There are certain classes that I think look better in blue than red. Uh, I think spy actually looks a lot better in blue, in my personal opinion. I also think uh, engineer looks better in blue. 
But I think have, uh, Medic should say red. Medic looks best in the red, in my opinion. The heavy is a spy. Yes, 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 yes. One of my favorite characters. Uh, one of the many characters I truly enjoy. Hold on. This little fucker. Um, gentlemen? <laughs> yes, he is a summon. Um, the spy. He is from France. He is French. He is very French. Apparently in the French version of TF2, he is actually English, and they do a lot of James Bond references, but, you know, America doesn't. Uh, everywhere else it doesn't. He is very French. He is, he loves smoking the Galonses and the Gavons. He, uh, he wears that all the time. No one knows what he looks like underneath, but we have a fan theory of what he looks like, and there's multiple fan theories. One of them, I jokingly says his hair makes him look like Pepe Le Pie, but that's another thing. He is from France. And there has always been a theory that Spy is somehow connected to uh, the Scout. The reason why is because in Meet the Spy, it is confirmed that Spy is dating Scout's mom. There are pictures and everything. He calls him Mon Petit Chiffle, which is a for term of endeavor, which actually means my fucking, which means my little cauliflower in French if you translate it directly. No one actually actually uses Mon Petit Chiffle anymore modern days, but it is a French stereotype. Um, there's a lot of French in him. He wears, uh, what are, he, his suits are, no, made, are made from a company known as Crab Maché. If you happen to know French like I do, Crab Maché means crab walk. <laughs> he is the spy, he is the spy crab meme creator, etc, etc. He is a wonderful person. He is funny. He also gives a shit about Scout. If you've ever saw Expiration Day, you can see how much he gives a shit about Scout. Uh, and when I was saying earlier, it is established that Spy is currently dating Scout's mom. It has actually been confirmed Spy was dating Scout's mom before Scout became a freaking mercenary. Before Scout was born. And it is confirmed Spy is Scout's, uh, is Scout's dad. This was a fan theory that had been going around for ages. And when the comic released that, yes, Scout is Spy's dad... You would not believe how much celebration in the streets happened. As well as anger and anguish, because apparently there was a very popular ship of Spy and Scout. Ugh. I wasn't even into that because of the age difference situation. You know, it's kind of weird. But whatever. We're not going to talk about shipping and fandom drama. This is not what we're here for. We're here for TF2 lore! Now, the next member of the support team, uh, my, um, my first TF2 crush, uh, uh the TF2, uh, uh, one of my, uh, I have a problem. Cat is established. She has a problem. She has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Why do I have a picture of his fucking crotch? Um, come on, just find one good image of Sniper. Just one good image of this man that you have draw, you drew frequently like a religion. Thank you. We have the Sniper. The Sniper's history is, it's fucking weird. <laughs> okay. Yes. The sniper. You know. Oops. I hit the wrong button. Excuse me. Fixing. How does that bullet feel? Feel good? Huh? 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 Ugh. Sniper. That voice. A uh, voice by, uh, ro uh, voice, uh, fun fact, voice by John Patrick Laurie, who happens to also be <laughs> married to Ellen McLean, who is the voice actress for the administrator in TF2, as well as uh, GLaDOS from Portal. Anyway, so Sniper from TF2. Now, it was always established he was Australian. He is from Australia. But like I mentioned earlier, if all of you fucking remembered, um, in Aust he doesn't look like an Australian. You guys can clearly see this, right? Remember. Remember, folks. Hold on. Gotta find it, gotta find it. Australians look like that. That's the average Australian. Okay? These are average Australians. He don't look like that. Now, y'all might be wondering why. Was it because they didn't decide that the Australians looked like that and it was just a design thing? Maybe. But they give lore reasons why. Sniper is not Australian. He is actually from New Zealand. Now... <laughs> We're going into the kooky comic land again. So, New Zealand doesn't exist anymore. So, New Zealand not only got the... So, Australia was a thing, like I established earlier, the beautiful magic... The unobtainable magic metal of crazy. 
and New Zealand basically also had access to Australia. Australia. Now, while this, while Australia was very more orky, if you will, very brutal, very let's use this fun shit for fighting and technology of fighty, fighty, fight, fight. New Zealand was more, let's use it more semi-intellectually, more artistically. And they were so hyper-focused on that, they didn't notice that the freaking New Zealand was sinking. Yeah, New Zealand was sinking and they didn't give a shit about that. They were, like, not caring until, like, last minute. And basically think of New Zealand kind of like the planet Krypton. It's very obvious it is a Superman reference. They fucking show it in the comics and it's so a Superman reference it's not even fucking funny. Apparently I'm receiving a message, checking my messages... What are my messages saying? Saying I'm streaming. Ah. Oh, that's gonna be fun to edit later. So it's established he is from New Zealand. And so basically his biological pair, biological people he has the misfortune of sharing the DNA with. You'll understand why I'm saying that. Um, basically while New Zealand was sinking, decided to basically do a Superman. Congratulations, uh, congratulations, Mick Mundy. You are... Congratulations, uh, Mundy. That's his name, by the way. You are about to be, uh, Superman to Australia. That's basically what happened. He basically got put into a rocket ship and blasted off, and he landed in Australia, where he gets picked up by a lovely couple who basically look like Eustace and Muriel from freaking, um, from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yes, the artist who drew that comic is very well aware of it, and that was kind of the, that was kind of like a reference to it. He is fully aware, and I like to think that somehow it is connected, because it'd be funny if it was. Um... So, Sniper is not Australian, he is from New Zealand. Uh, fun fact, in comics, they decide to go to New Zealand to see if they can find the last bit of Australium, for reasons I will cover later, and he does get to meet his parents. And by parents, I mean the people he has the misfortune of sharing fucking DNA with. Now, you might be wondering why I keep saying that. <laughs> his parent, there, there's a, and this might be because it's related to me, because everyone knows I don't talk about the biological sperm donor, the man I have misfortunes of sharing DNA with. He got eaten by a fucking void beast. He got eaten by something, we don't talk about it. Um, and basically, you know that trope, or if you've ever seen Guardians of the Galaxy... They're not good, no. If you've ever seen uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and you remember where Peter Quill meets his biological father, and his father basically is a pure-grade molten asshole. That's the nice way of saying it. Um, hold on. I'm taking a step. That's kind of the situation that uh, Sniper got. He found out his father is just a money greedy, greed, uh, greedy, horrible asshole of a parent who doesn't give a shit about his kid. And his mom is like a pure Karen. <laughs> She's a wine mom Karen and I hate her. And it's, they're not good people. They are not good people, not good parents. And I don't call them Sniper's parents. I call them the people Sniper has the misfortune of sharing DNA with, which is a term that I use frequently. Admittedly, without the satisfying shoots their dad, but sadly, I did not, sadly, Mundy did not get the joy of being able to shoot his fucking dad, which I personally think would have been some form of catharsis. I think when that comic came out was around the same time I was having uh, real life issues involving the man I have the misfortune of sharing DNA with. And so I was hoping for that catharsis as well. And, you know, I was still on edge from that whole experience when the comic got released and, you know, all that fun shit. We're not going to go deep into my lore. This is TF2 lore. Happy times. Happy times. Um, so, basically, uh, Mundy's act, uh, who I call Mundy. Hi, welcome. You missed the fun thing. I'm talking about Sniper's parents. Um, Mundy's, uh, who I, the people who I call Mundy's parents, the nice Australian couple that look like you, Sis and yeah, from Courage the Cowardly Dog. They're also sadly no longer alive. They are in the comic, and Sniper had the misfortune of having to bury his parent, bury those parents, which, to be perfectly honest, I think would be horrifying and traumatic. Oh my god, someone give this man a weighted blanket and a plushy alligator crocodile, please, please, please. These characters have some fucking... Tra There's a lot of trauma. You can just describe all of their backstory as trauma. Lots of it. Y'all need therapy. I can hear you. Ah, I can hear you scuttling in the background. You, by the way, you missed Marasmus. Oh. <laughs> There's a vod that will come out later. You get to watch the vod, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch the vod. You're gonna have to watch I, the vod. There's so much. I have a. Uh, Do you have cookies? I don't want my total tag. It's leaking. <laughs> it's because the motor went. Oh no. 
So, uh, where was I? Yeah, so basically, Mundy, the sniper, basically never got the sh satisfying shoot. They're fucking dead. Dead. Their biological sperm donor. Dead catharsis that Peter Quill got. But still. So, that's sniper. And also, he kind of got shot and killed, and I had to wait, like, a year and a half to find out what happened to him. That hurt, by the way! <laughs> uh, we don't- we'll talk about the comics and the back- the back history later. And that's the sniper. And now we have the last one. My personal favorite. The one who I cosplayed frequently. The one I do the accent for. The one who I basically had as a PNG for a while when I played this wonderful little tiny indie game. You might know of it called Two Point Hospital. Oh, that voice is going to be a strain for a bit. You know him. You love him. The medic. Hold on. We have to summon the medic voice. You do 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 do. Let's go practice medicine. Charlie. That's not Spy. <laughs> oh, you missed Spy. You missed the whole Spy is Scout's dad thing. By the way, Spy is Scout's dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's been implied for so long, it's finally canon. <laughs> anyway, the medic from Brusa. Fun fact, medic is from a lovely little place known as Rotenburg, Germany. I'm going to be doing a German accent the whole damn time, so y'all dealing with this, okay? So you're dealing with this. This is me basically doing my medic voice when I used to cosplay medic frequently. Fun fact, Medic was my first cosplay. I still have the shit and everything, I just have to clean it. The problem is, um, I can't clean my coat the traditional way, because I'm the moron who didn't read the tags of what the fabric was made out of, and didn't... And then after buying it and, you know, pre... you know, getting it all cut and bought and everything, my grandma goes, You know this stuff's dry clean only, right? What? <laughs> I just... <laughs> That's why it costs so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she then yes. looked at me and went, you just went for color and if it felt nice on your skin, didn't you? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Steaks were made. I already bought the shit. It's already cut. We're already going through it. Let's go, Grandma. <laughs> my grandma made my cosplay. Help me make my cosplay, by the way. Love you, Grandma, if you're listening. You're not. I know you're not. You don't watch my videos, Grandma, because you don't know my videos exist. See? See? It doesn't make it sound as harsh. Anyway, where was I? Anyway, so Medic is, by the way, from a lovely little place known as Rotenberg, Germany. Is it Rotenberg? No, it's not Rotenberg. It's, uh... uh entire world face... Leo, come on! I was a dumb idiot 20-something. I'm now a dumb idiot 30-something. I've learned. Sorry. He is not from Rothenburg. Rothenburg is the name of the map. He is from a place called Stuttgart, Germany, which is not that far from here. Which is actually, fun fact, I think a tiny little village in Stuttgart, which is also known as Rothenburg. So, just saying, connections. He is from Germany. He is, a med he is, of course, a doctor who lost his medical license. See, so what happened was the patient woke up and he was, his skeleton was missing and the doctor was never heard from again. <laughs> Anyways, that is how I lost my medical license. Gives you an idea? <laughs> um... He also, he's basically, he, he invented what is known as the, uh, he invented the, uh, the Medigun, which does the entire things, including the near immortality. He invented that, by the way. I want everyone to notice this. This man invented the Uber. Fear this German man. For he is cookie funny German who likes to open people up and play, play with their insides and play with, the, play with their organs. And has wonderful birds known as, med, known as Akamitis. I love you, Akamitis. Unive. Hello, Mizuki. Welcome to TF2 Law Lessons. I am currently doing my medic impression. I am fully aware I do not sound as good as the voice actor known as Robin Atkins sounds. Fun fact, also voices Luxord. No one make jokes right now. <laughs> no one make jokes however crush on the two characters voiced by the same voice actor. That's, that's true. <laughs> Mizuki would know. She's married to a German. <laughs> oh, shit. Per forgive me in my German accent. Well, German ancestry. Uh, yes. Nero, Nero's wonderful person. As is Mizuki. Yes. Hello. Anyway, where was I? So, here's some fun facts about the medic. One, the patient, one, he is a, uh, he does not have a medical license anymore. Two, he has, he stole a truck, he stole a catering truck, for, he stole a, sorry, sorry, he stole a truck that was full of doves for a, uh, oh, fuck, what are those people? An ambassador's wedding. That's where he got the doves. He stole a truck full of doves and a, I think it was like a truck with doves and catering for an ambassador's wedding. And that's how he got Archimedes. Oh, thank you! Oh, I got that accent on that. Oh, that's good. Listening to the medic talk constantly. You know, you always have that problem if, you know, possibly, maybe, you know. 
You're doing it wrong because the care voice actor does it wrong. But I'm glad I'm at least doing something decent. Where was I? Chuck full of doves. Thank you. So that's how we got Archimedes, by the way. And here's another thing. You want to know why this man can pull out fucking awesome, badass, medical-based miracles so well, out of, so well and so wonderfully? <laughs> come on, guess why? Tell us more. Guess, g g come on, no, dude, just guess why. Guess why. You'll never get it, but guess why. Is there because it's because he have he has the uh, that's a joke though because he has he has the heart the heart of a twelve year old of a twelve year old boy above his mantle. No. Oh, who's the pumpkin? This is Survivor. Survivor got turned into something cute for Halloween mode. You like it? I am the pumpkin king. <laughs> Just for October. Just for October, and maybe some of November. We gotta fight Christmas somehow. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, Survivor has become a pumpkin. I got bored. Fun fact, there's a Top King Pumpkin in TF2. More on that later. It was a Halloween event. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. I have a happy little crown. <laughs> um, so, it, so the medic <laughs> made a deal with the devil. I'm not sh 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 you not. The medic made a deal with the devil. Lucifer himself. This is established in the last published comic. Hold on. Let me find it. Because I love this comic. The medic made a deal with the yeah. devil to be able to do what he fucking does, which does not make sense to science and man. That's true. I mean, he, do he does have a head of, um, of a spire. Yes. It's immortal and uh invulnerable to damage in his in his uh I guess it's refrigerator it's a refrigerator, but it's for more medical supplies. So it's the medical fridge. It's the refrigerator. Yeah. Let's be honest, dude. it's a fucking refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. The point is though, yes, he has one of those. <laughs> He's basically breaking science and man because of the devil himself helping him. Now, fun fact Medic dies temporarily in comic. This is something I can talk about. And Satan is trying to get his soul is trying to get his soul back. And the medic points out, going, I can get you more souls. <laughs> <laughs> Basically establishing that all of those who are currently part of the Uber uh, program system, you know the thing that makes you temporarily immortal in TF2 or boost in, boosted in some form or fashion, depending on the medical gun. Your soul's out of Satan! Allegedly. There's kind of sort of some contradictory in this actual comic because Scout goes to heaven. Long story. Temporarily, mind you. Oh, God. Well, we don't know if it's actually Scout going to heaven or if he's having a fucking hallucination. Cause... Oh, hello. Chambers. Haunted Mansion's activated. Hello. Sounds echo through the halls. <laughs> Haunted Mansion! The lights the air is I guess, deathly as long as you guys see the Boston boy equivalent of what heaven is. Oh, it's great, there's a foosball table. There is a foosball table! I'm jealous now. <laughs> there's at least one foosball table. Um, so, Scout is, um... Scout, well, the thing is, we don't know if it's actually heaven heaven, or if Scout is basically suffering from some form of fucking illusion, because, you know, he kind of was shot and is bleeding out. Sniper went through the same thing also in comic and saw his parents again who loved and supported him for his job which we all sit here going that's bullshit because <laughs> we all know and it's established and meet the sniper his parents at least his dad isn't a fan of him being a sniper because it sounds like he's a crazed gunman when it's actually no I am a professional blah 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 we have standards be efficient be polite have a plan to meet everyone you meet g'day g'day uh and all that. So anyway, so Medic has actually made a deal with the devil. While he was dying, he pointed out going, I can do this thing. Right? Right. And he's like, basically, I want the equivalency of this many souls. And he's like, what, why do you want this many? And he's like, I'll be so willing to sell souls. It's like, for example, I'm willing to sell my soul for this pen. And he sold his soul for a pen that Satan had, and it's actually kind of established later on to use for a weird, sick, twisted fuckery thing. We'll talk about that comic later! So the Medic... <laughs> I love him! He's a wonderful character, in my opinion. Where was I? I'm sorry, I'm gushing over the medic over here. Um, hello? 
Fire? Fire, did you die again? No, just... Get, uh, I just had... I'm looking up a new turtle tank. Oh, your turtle... Not turtle, turtle tank, um... Filter. Oh, I don't I have to remember the size of the actual tank. Big. It's, tw it's a 20 gallon tank, so... Fuck. It's so, a big tank. So, that's basically the medic. Um... So back to the comic! Where was I in the comic? Oh yeah, Ring of Fired! Um, so it's kind of established that... Uh, oh, actually, no, I can talk about Miss Pauling. Uh, Miss Pauling is the assistant in TF2. It was the assistant to the administrator. Um, uh, fuck, I did not think this would be as easy, hard as it is now. Pauling, help me, please, sweetie, darling, help me. I'm, 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 so, I'm feeling frazzled like you. So Miss Pauling in the beginning was just like a an assistant character to the administrator, which was only used for a comic which was all about soldier and demo man on opposite teams being best friends, which is kind of against contract rules. And that happened. And Pauling was just there in the background. But then Pauling got used more and more, and she's kind of like a very important character where she's actually in the video game itself as a voice, like the administrator. And no model in game, but she has been actually used as a model in not only promotions now, she's also being used as a model in, um, she also has a model in Expiration Date, which is one of my, a very popular set, sort, short, source filmmaker short, which was very popular. And she's in that, and it's like we have the fully established Pauling, and she's voiced by Ashley Birch, and, uh, so Pauling was, like I said, Pauling was originally just a teeny tiny character that was just used for side, but she got to be used more and more due to one, T uh, fandom was actually very positive to her. Because, you know, some people don't usually get positive when it comes to female characters added to a mainly male base. But TF2, fun fact, has a good large female fan base. <laughs> Which is nice. So that's why TF2 has more and more established women, while not in com while not in game, it's in comic, and I will talk about some of the other badass women, including Heavy Sisters. Oh my god, I love Heavy Sisters! They're so badass! I love them dearly. Um... So, Pauling became more of an established character, and is kind of... She's an overworked, very stressed, loves the co where's the color purple assistant. I think I relate to her in some form or fashion, because, um things <laughs> and she's awesome yeah. and she basically decided upon herself because the group got fired and all of that to one make sure that the team still was working again via fighting the robots to get guns and money um she also basically was trying to find the administrator who has basically gone missing in comics she can't contact them so basically she rounds up she's been rounding up all the mercenaries again this was post mvm and she goes, hey, thing, money, we got to do this thing. Some were easier to convince than others. Demo Man was hyper easy because Demo Man basically went into this massive depressive funk because he didn't have a job anymore. Because basically Met Demo Man is a workaholic bitch. Um, I, th I, I think, I, I want to imagine, I think it was probably Spy, the Engineer, and need to be more, need more thorough convincing where especially and sniper whereas the soldier's a soldier <laughs> yes and no <laughs> just needs to be look look communist them over there <laughs> shoot Not it actually okay. no uh, it was easy to convince soldier be like hey soldier you get to kill people okay <laughs> yep that's about it <laughs> that was soldier. there you go something eh, soldier's very he knows what he does he does it well yep and it's snapping fucking necks oh god um <laughs> also established in comic uh, hold on, I'm trying to find the Ring of Fire, Grave Matters, that's talking about the Halloween event, give me a second. Uh, Unhappy Returns, that's when we start getting the good things. Um, so, it's very interesting, uh, I'm trying to figure out the best ways. So basically the team has been disbanded and Pauling is basically trying to get the team back together. Now, there's a small problem, there is a problem. So Scout and Spy basically were put in jail. For reasons. I'm trying to remember what those the... fucking reasons were because I, it's either going to be hilarious or they never talked about it. Um, I want to assume it has something to do with the Christmas episode. No, oddly. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it does not have to do with fucking Christmas. Oddly. Oh no, they were accused of killing Tom Jones. That's why. Oh, there it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> Welcome to TF2 lore! <laughs> so they were basically told, basically, um, they were accused of murdering Tom Jones because Tom Jones recently died and they're mercenaries. And, um, Two Fort, which is basically the main city where the gravel wars happen, their water's lined with lead. <laughs> they're dumb. <laughs> Pauling even establishes goes, do you ever wonder why we always give you guys water bottles instead of the local tap shit and we tell you not to drink the tap? <laughs> yeah, their water's lined with lead because of the gravel. <laughs> oh, God. And so you kid soldier doing a funny line was like, wait, that's why we don't drink. Wait, we're not supposed to drink from the tap? Which kind of gives you an idea of what's happened with Soldier's Brain. There might be some lead poisoning. Just a little. A little scunch of lead poisoning just for a treat. Um, so basically what happens is, uh, Sol uh, Scout and Spy are currently in jail accused of being murdered for Tom Jones and they're gonna hang him. <laughs> Hanging is a thing in Two Fort. <coughs> I'm also so not reading the comic to make sure I have it fucking right right now. Excuse me. Um, ba -be -ba -ba -ba. And basically, Soldier, it, like I mentioned, uh, Demo Man was basically in a massive depressive funk because he couldn't get a job because who wants to hire an explosive mercenary nowadays, you know? So, Demo Man's basically me after finding out my favorite character that I love, love to death dies in a fandom, I dies in a thing of media I love, and I haven't gotten to that stage of, I'm going to ignore that and make my own canon. And, you know, is eating ice cream, hanging out with Eyelander, which is his sword that talks. Long story, he stole it from Erasmus. Story done. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, Pauline goes, you want a job? Demo Man's like... I got the job! And he gets a job and he's happy again. Basically, Devil Man is suffering from something where he basically has to constantly work or he feels useless. Which is kind of sad. Y'all need therapy. That's all I'm saying. And basically, they're trying to find Scout and Spy who are in jail. They're currently in court. Uh, fun fact, Spy was about to kill the fucking judge with a teeny tiny little, uh, teeny tiny butterfly knife he keeps in his tooth. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> it sounds about right. It sounds stupid. Fun fact, this is where we find out that Soldier is a- Soldier basically pulls an objection and also gets hanged. What? <laughs> well, almost gets hanged, sorry. How did- No, questions for later. Questions for later. Oh, no, wait, sorry, they don't get it. Yeah, no, they're about to get hanged as well. Because basically Soldier- uh, Basically Soldier does an objection and interrupts the court case. Demo Man's trying to stop him, basically due to disruption of court. They are, and also being known as the mercenaries who basically fucked up the town, allegedly. Um, basically, they're also gone to get hanged. So they're being hanged. <laughs> oh boy, this is the TF2 content y'all wanted, right? Yeah. While that is happening, Pauline is at the library slash something else with Pyro, who are trying to look for records. And then basically she finds the records and goes, Pyro, take care of these. Push. Done! <laughs> <laughs> Which is great, because Pyro's just basically started a small fire in the library, and there's kids around him, and they're like, Yay! Fire! They're my chil- These are my children. I love them. <laughs> and, uh, basically they're just trying to find the rest of the team. Um, Pauline basically goes goes you need to go to the library and there's a weird stupid cheesy educational moment which is kind of jokey and you know it's making fun of that whole trope about how education is important trope that you had at the end of video of kids cartoons you know what i'm talking about yeah. and have that and then we get to basically the next comic is them going to russia siberia cold ass fucking mountains where there are bears i hate it <laughs> it's <laughs> the bears where they go to find Heavy. Heavy is currently out in the mountains with his family, like I have established earlier, and I told you I was going to cover more on this later, and today is later. Uh, the team basically, without pa uh, basically the team of Soldier and Scout and Pyro are off now in, in Siberia, Russia, it's the mountains, it's cold, and they're going to go get Heavy, while the other team are going to Australia to go get Sniper. We'll talk more on that later. So while they are off in Russia, 
it's the it, it, Russia. It's the former USSR. I'm just going to say Russia. I know I'm most likely wrong, but I am not going to try to pronounce Russian names right now, okay? And basically, they're out in the wilderness. Their plane crashed. They're dying. Um, <laughs> Scout's about basically is in a hot dog weenie costume that basically gets attacked by a bear and basically smashes Scout frequently. And basically, the only reason why he's not dying is because the hot dog suit is keeping his organs on the inside. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Uh, I'm not! <laughs> nope. I, I know you're not. And there's a whole line where soldiers, like, the only reason why bears are attacking us is because of either honey or menstruating women. And then points to Pyro going, Pyro! And we're like, oh, they establishing Pyro's a girl? No. Pyro's holding a giant case full of honey. <laughs> Was it honey or was it meat? It was something like that. Basically, the joke is everyone's like, oh, Pyro's a girl. No, it's a gag. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at it. So, have, so Soldier, in his, in his brief moment of pure himboness, strips himself down, covers himself in honey, and goes wrestle a little bear. While Scout is dying in the snow, and Pyro just puts snow on top of Scout, being like, Barry, bury this kid. Barry, rescue her off to the pot chain. He's dead soon. He's going to be with Jesus. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Soldier is covered in honey and is naked and fighting a bear. You think I'm not joking? I would show it on Twitch, but I don't know if I'm allowed to. Also, that's where that, that clip I have come from. Came from. I could show oh, it to I... you. Yeah. Okay. I know the one you're talking about. Okay, so. Then Heavy comes out. Da 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 da. Big majestic bear man fights the bear and kills it. And we get to meet Heavy's family. They go into the cabin. And basically, you meet Heavy's mom, who's basically preparing bear. Because preparing bear, that basically was the bear that tried to kill everyone. And then his sisters come in, and I will now introduce the sisters. Now, one sister I will talk about last because she's established in the comic a lot more than the other two, so I'm going to cover the first two pretty easily. Okay. Oh. Okay, where are they? 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 Okay, that's. Okay, so. Boop. And where is Bronislava? Oh, wait, hold on. There's a picture of all three sisters. We can do it this way. Okay, so. This is a kind of an homage to the fandom in general. This is what the fandom thinks of Scott, Spy, and Sniper. I love this image. This is canon comic shit, people. So we have Yana and Bronislava. Uh, Yana is the blonde. Bronislava is the brunette. They are two of heavy sisters. They're only featured in one comic. But I still love them anyway, because the little amount gives you an idea of what their characters are like. A.K.A. they have massive crushes on Spy and Sniper and think they're hot. <laughs> and it's kind of like a poke at the fans. But like a playful poke, not a mean poke. You know, it's basically like, yeah, we're aware of you guys. We, we're fully aware of your thirsting for these two characters. And we're making fun of you for it. But we're going to do it in like the friendly way of having two characters that are like that. But they're also established on their own. Anyway, so Yana and Bronislava are coming in with Bear, and his mom and their mom is like, Oh, we don't need Bear. She's like, But we just hunted Bear! Well, your brother got another bear and brought his friends here. Friends? Them knowing it's he knowing that heavy. If you see a small round pink orb, run. run. Basically, them thinking, because they've heard stories of his mercenary work, thinking it's spy and sniper, and it's basically this page happens. <laughs> Sadly, that's not happening. So, anyway, there's also Heavy's other sister. And, you know, they're cute and they're adorable, they're sweet. But now we're going to talk about the main bitch. Well, she's not a bitch, but she's a badass and we love her. And do I not have a full image of this woman? Fuck. Well, you's not a non-full image of this woman then. Where is it? 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 Behold, Zana. This is Heavy's youngest sister, if I remember correctly. I can't remember. They don't really establish, you know, what... It's established Heavy is the oldest brother. Is the oldest. He is the eldest brother. And there is kind of an establishment of, like, ages and everything, because you do get a flashback of them where they're in... Where they're escaping from the gulag. Right? And you can kind of figure it out from there how old everyone is. But I'm dumb and I can't remember. So this is Zana. The most badass bitch ever, I swear. Zana is Heavy's sister, who is in a relationship with, who basically has been living out in the cold winter for a long time, has not seen another man, tries to seduce Scout, 
which leads to hilarious results, aka Scout basically has a crisis of fate because he's like, no, I am taken by Miss Pauling, you know, Miss Pauling, the character who's not fucking interested in him whatso fucking ever, no matter how much he tries. I would like to point that out, okay? But Scout thinks he's in a relationship with Miss Pauling. I feel very sorry for him. So she goes, well, she sees him having the crisis of, should I be with this woman? I love Pauling. She goes off to see Soldier. Excuse me while I get the greatest fucking comic panel ever. Well, one of the greatest fucking comic panels. The, the whole comic is gold. Let's be perfectly honest. The whole fucking comic is gold. Da, 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 da. Also, I would like to point out that Pyro kills a bear by themselves. With a fire axe. Because Pyro is, is a maniac. He's <laughs> an absolute maniac. Pyro is wonderful. He's a, well, yes. He is my, he's my main for a reason. Anyway. So Pyro. Might all the fire. So basically, we're gonna get clever with this. Uh, clever with this, aka we're trying to hide the dirtiness. Trying. Anyway, <laughs> um, basically Zana see she's basically going like, yeah, fuck this. I'm not gonna deal with this crazy insanity of this stupid little tiny twink. And basically, see Soldier walking down the hallway eating ham. Who I, I would like to point out had a crisis. Well, not ham, eating bear. Who had a crisis of faith about eating Russian food, but then broke the problem. He's like, I'm hungry. Food. But it's Russian. We can't help the- we can't support the commies, but they saved, you know, one of those stupid moral dilemma choices. Anyway, Zana sees Soldier walking down the hallway, right? Please know what this comic says right now. <laughs> <laughs> Back off, yep. lady. I mean, both of these. She's like, make love to me. Wait for it. Thinking about it. Okay! <laughs> Yoink! I love Zana. She knows what she wants and she got it. I love her. So, she goes off and they become a couple. Basically, they do whatever good Russian girls and good American boys do in the bedroom. I have theories, but I can't talk about them on Twitch. <laughs> and they become a couple. They are in a relationship now. And it's so cute. And I love their relationship because it's very Gomez and Morticia, if you will. To the outside perspective, it's really weird and creepy. But it really shows how much they love each other. There's a scene in a later comic where Soldier's about to snap the neck of an enemy. And she just goes up right behind and puts her hands on his and joins in on the neck snap. <laughs> If that ain't love, I don't know what is. Or, um... I, I'm, I'm stifling laughter. Give me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you loving this idea? Just like, it's like, I'm gonna snap this man's neck. It's like, no, we, we will, will snap, snap this, this man's, man's neck. neck. And they snap it together. The hood and neck snap. I love that comic. I love Zana. Zana is such a wonderful fucking character, in my opinion. <laughs> um, there's a whole thing where she's like, where Soldier is like, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a necklace full of the ears of the enemies we take care of. She thinks that's romantic. Because it's like, oh, you're thinking of me. And she loves this. And I want to also point out, now you people are going to be all like, but shouldn't they be freaked out about this? Shouldn't she be freaked out by all the killing? I go, one, her brother's a mercenary. And two, while Heavy was being asked to come back to the team and help take care of this problem, Heavy was very against it, going, I can't leave. I have to protect my family. I have to do the job as the man of the house. Because remember, his dad got killed by bad people. And they go, and he's like, what if the bad people who are coming after us come after you while I'm gone? Do you want to know what the family's response was? It was it, don't worry, we will kill Batman and bad, <laughs> Batman and bury him with the bears. Kinda. They go, oh, brother, they've already came. We took care of them. Oh, that's all the lever. <laughs> So he's like, you all, you, and Heavy's basically dealing with the flabbergasting of, oh my god, my sister's just killed somebody? And I'm like, and then, you know, his mother is also pointing out she is a big, strong woman. And there is a lovely little headcanon that his mom is basically the reason why he knows how to use a minigun. <laughs> like, she was like a badass minigun user back in World War One, Or something of that nature. Because, come on, it's alternate history. You can have fun with this shit. Women can yeah. be in war. Um... So basically, they're like, okay then. And Heavy's like, I did not know this. 
I have tons of money. Would you guys like to go somewhere else and live somewhere nicer? They go to America. Uh, his family basically gets to go to America and lives in America now. But there's never any more stuff covered on that. You know, because the seventh comic has... The final comic has never come out. It's been a few thousand years, Valve. Get on it, fucking assholes! Anyway. And so... But... So all the family goes away, except for Zana. Zana comes with her boy... Goes with her boyfriend. Who later also becomes engaged to him. The romance is very quick. We will have to point this out. So while all that shit's happening in Russia... In Australia... With heavy... In Australia, with Demo Man and, um... Doc... Demo Man and Miss Pauling, uh, they're trying to find Sniper, who's out in the middle of fucking no, who knows, out in the bush. Which they do find his cabin. Sniper's got a little crazy because he basically found his parents dead and he had to go bury them. Which, you know, kind of sort of is a little fucked up and traumatized, traumatizing. Very traumatic, yes. Very traumatic. And basically he's like, why the hell do you need me? Da da da, blah blah blah. And she also goes, we're gonna find your family. Pauling has records of Sniper's family. Sniper, knowing he is a person who is not knowing he is not normal for Australian standards, is massively curious. Basically, Sniper is going through what I did when I had the opportunity to meet the man who I have the misfortune of sharing DNA with. So you can see where I get passionate. Um, and so basically they go to New Zealand, which is an underwater, not utopia. Basically, that sunk because they were too busy working on science instead of noticing, hey, uh, we're sinking, which basically led to Sniper becoming basically uh the New Zealand equivalent of Superman and basically blasted off in a rocket. You think I'm joking? I'm not. Um, nope. Is this the F2? I can make up some shit and you would think, yep, yeah, that sounds like TF2. I could if yep. I wanted to. I won't. Um, so Snipe, basically they go to uh, New Zealand to find the last bit. Not only were they going there to, basically she, Pauling said, we'll meet your parents there. Also, she's there to basically find the last bits of Australia because her, the administrator has told her, find the fucking Australia. That is your job. The team thing is a bonus, but I need you to find the Australia. The administrator, who is Helen, has been very obsessed over this Australia. Now, <laughs> I haven't really talked about the administrator because of many reasons. She's very interweaven into the comic and is a very complex character, and there are so many fan theories involving her, which some of them were confirmed in the last released comic, but also were not. Uh, basically, uh, the administrator is also immortal. She is, she is also immortal. She has been using Australium as well as a way to keep herself immortal. Now, there has been arguments over, because I meant, if you remember earlier on this fucking road trip of insanity, I mentioned Redman's assistant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, hold on. We gotta get the catch-up comic for this shit, because the catch-up comic has the best artwork ever. Uh, so, I've established, I mentioned... That uh, Redmond's assistant, Elizabeth, this is Elizabeth, note how she looks very familiar to the administrator, basically asked uh, Redmond to do the, uh, basically asked uh, Reg Ragahan to do all the shit that he did, which led to the events of TF2. And she is also apparently related to, a, and that's Elizabeth, who's been around for a long time. Now, there's a theory that's going around that Elizabeth is actually Helen. Now, Helen is the name of the administrator, who basically has gone missing through this whole comic shit. They look very familiar, and everyone theorizes that possibly Helen and Elizabeth are the same person. Has that been really established? Kind of implied it could be a possibility, also could be implied it's not. Okay? But the administrator, it is established, is immortal. Semi-immortal. You know, as immortal as you can be, basically relying on a very precious metal that is a finite resource that cannot be duplicated. Eek. But she basically is telling her to, telling Pauling to get the fucking Australium, and that's why they're going to New Zealand, which apparently had a stash of Australium and was sunken underneath, so they thought it was just like a broken, sunken city and there was no one there. Congratulations, we found Sniper's parents, who are total lushes and assholes and we don't like them! And the Australian that they had left over, they were like, oh yeah, we don't know what to use it for. So we basically th used it to paint a rocket, because they're basically wanting uh, Sniper's parents, parents, air quotes, hi Fib, uh, basically are like, hey, we're gonna, you know, try to escape from the sunken New Zealand. Basically, it's like Bioshock down there, if you want an idea. Uh, Atlantis slash Bioshock. 
And so we're making this rocket and we're going to go to space. And we decided to paint Australium on the cover of the rocket because whimsy! <laughs> There's no real reason. They're like, oh yeah, we would just use that shit for paint. I'm like, the face I'm making is hilarious. Um, oh, my surprise Majima's broken. I'll fix that later. Um, so that happens. And the rocket ship basically does launch up. I'm trying to give a fucking lesson, Fibnak. Me being put into the orb of containment does not make the lesson happen any better. Bad, Fibnak. Bad. Um, when the, uh, when the rocket gets launched and basically, do you remember how I talked about Team Fortress Classic earlier? The original, the OGTF crew? Not, not the ones from the 1800s, the ones from 1930. Right? Yeah. They come back! Huh. With a vengeance! Oh no. Not in the best way either! I am generally surprised by this. Oh, also, I forgot. There's a little bit that happened before they went to New Zealand. So basically, they basic uh, went to a, if I remember correctly, an Australian Navy camp or whatever to steal a submarine to get to New Zealand. Sniper, uh, it, which now has a team of, it has the whole team back together except for engineer, uh, except for engineer and the medic who are currently missing. They have not been found. They have been trying to find them. They cannot find them. They're missing. But it has the whole team basically, except for again the two characters. One of them I enjoy. Um, and that's where the next step, where the cute, where they have to basically infiltrate this military base to get the, to get the submarine. And <coughs> one of my favorite things is Soldier and Zana are being their cute little couple self trying to figure out how to infiltrate this thing. And he goes, so Zana, darling, sweetheart, you know, the sweet love romantic. Oh my God. They're such a good couple. They're sick and twisted and they're a good couple. I love it. Uh, basically goes, we have to go at this with extreme prejudice. She goes, so be racist at them? He's like, no, no, we're not being racist towards the enemy. I thought that too. Wrong. It's just hilarious. She's like, it's like Zana's assuming prejudice means racist in this case. And I'm like, I mean, kind of. Drug. Drug? It's like, they, this is the comic scene. It's like. He's like, I want you to treat these men with extreme prejudice. You want me to be racist with them. No, no, I've made that mistake before. Extreme prejudice just means killing everybody as violently as possible. I will leave the amount of actual prejudice to your discretion. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love this comic. I love TF2, can you tell? But, but you get the idea. It's like, no, don't be racist. Just be homicidal. Just be homicidal. There's a difference. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Heavy and Scout aren't there. Heavy and Scout are basically in Australia, I think. They went off to Australia to go try to collect some more Australium. In Australia. Because that's where it is. Please enjoy the dune buggy. Um, and there's a whole funny little scene where basically the two couples are getting all cute and adorable. And then this happens. We're basically... You know, they're getting all cute and sweet and romantic. I'm envious. And Spy basically is like, Okay, glad to know you two are riding like pigs. I've been doing my work. You know the thing we're supposed to do. And they're like, we, Be professional. We came up with a plan. And then Soldier goes, Zana, quickly, be racist at him. That happens! <laughs> you hear that stupid, my fiance hates your whole stinking race, but you didn't plan for that. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that, but I'm laughing at that. <laughs> I like to imagine that the insults that are being blacked out are like just like basic French things, like frog, frog. Yeah. They're like basic ass. It's just Zana doing a bad French accent. That's so bad we can't write it. <laughs> wee wee hon hon baguette. I like eating frog legs. See, base and search your. <laughs> yeah, basically stereotypical but harmless, <laughs> semi harmless. Um. So that happens, and like, again, Scout and uh, Heavy are basically off in Australia to try to find more Australium, because that's where, you know, traditionally Australium would be, because, you know, smart. Which involves them finding, uh, what's the giant fucking rock in Australia? Giant fucking rock in Australia. Uh... Air's Rock. Air's Rock. Oh, okay, that's fine. The giant ass yeah, red I, rock I, I... in the middle of the Australian outback. If you're Australian, you know what I'm talking about. If you happen to have gone to Australia, you know what I'm talking about. It's the giant, giant red rock. So they found it, and apparently in lore, it's actually made of pure Australium. Was. 
It's been hollowed out. By someone. We are assuming either red men and blue... We are assuming it's either gray men who hollowed it out or another company, which is another group, which is known as Darling. Uh, they are... A t uh, they Darling is a guy who's, like, in and out of the comics sometimes. He is currently making Saxon Hale and his ex-girlfriend Maggie work together, who I've never talked about because I kind of forgot about her till now. Freedom! <coughs> Maggie is also Australian and was the ex-girlfriend of, uh, the he of uh, Saxon Hale. They had a relationship. It didn't do well because Saxon Hale only cares about fighting, never cared about the relationship. Gives you kind of an idea of what's going on, right? Saxon Hale, the man who just like, who will who give uh, him, him his arm pep talks for like look while doing sit ups and push ups. Basically, Saxon. Uh, he, yeah. He he had to pretend to be a hippie for all of five minutes, and that was infuriating. I mean, I'd had to pretend to be a hippie for a week. Yeah, <laughs> kidding. Anyway, so that's basically what happened, and so they broke up, and then they're basically being forced to work with this guy known as Darling, who doesn't want to do a zoo, who wants to start who basically saxon and darling do not get along because saxon hale is like very pro going out and hunting animals while uh, hunting and by hunting i mean fighting whilst uh darling wants to create a thing known as a zoo unless yeah. it's a farm <laughs> and it's it's a weird disagreement it's like the stupidest of disagreements but it like it works in universe if you think about it hard enough um <clears throat> While Saxton, and so they've been doing some stuff, and then they basically, he, uh, 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 soldier, uh, soldier, um, heavy and scout meet up with, uh, Maggie and Saxton. Maggie chokes out scout. There's a running gag in the comics where scout keeps getting choked out. <laughs> like, someone pointed out how many times scout gets choked out somehow in the comic in some form or fashion, as well as how he kind of gets choked out in some of the, uh, meet the video, in some of the, uh, f videos. And yeah, everyone's the very first one had him with uh, Heavy yeah. trying to basically choke him out. Which, yeah, in Meet the Scout. I feel like his family probably did that a lot, considering he has a lot of brothers and sisters. A lot of brothers. Yeah, he has like eight brothers. Or six brothers. He's got a lot. He, his family's big. They're Bostonian. They're most likely yeah. most likely Catholic, in my opinion, because, you know, the it's nothing against Catholics, but you know, the mentality of people back then, da-da-da-da-da-da, if we use history, blah-blah-blah, you know, every sperm is sacred. Yep. <laughs> Who knows? Gonna do a Monty Python reference in a TF2 lore vid. Um, so Scout gets choked out, and everyone's making a joke, going, "The mount this time this man gets choked out. It's gonna slowly become a kink." And we're all like, "Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh." Anyway, so that happens. Note that and down. What? It's like note that down, note that down, note that down, note that down, noting down, 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 down. Um. Anyway, <clears throat> focus on the main plot. Uh, so they meet up, and they're basically like, hey, wait, you didn't take the Australian? No, did you? And he's like, ah. And so they're basically trying to figure this out. You have the whole situation with, uh, that happens in what happens with, um, S Sniper and Pauline basically talking, and is like, and while well, dealing with a drunk demo man who basically is just like, eh. Because he got hit with some, uh, moonshine, and demo man is reacting in a very funny way. You know, playing on the drunk stereotype. But still. Um... And is that then, the one where uh, is that the one where he he thought he was being poisoned by giving the actual food and water? Yep, where his liver and him, are, where he's having the mass hallucination with his liver. Yep, <laughs> liver's not trusted here no more. <laughs> liver no trusted. <laughs> or was that? Yes. Or was that? No, that was that was that happens next comic. That's next comic. Okay. The liver's not trusted. Da da da. Oh, liver, I love you. Okay, okay. Demo man's on drugs. It's okay. Um, so that happens. And when, oh fuck, where am I? Uh, so basically all the events in New Zealand happen. New Zealand is sunken completely now. And then Sniper gets shot. <clears throat> That's the end of Blood in the Water, the Blood in the Water comic. His family basically becomes, his mother basically becomes a bitch and goes off. Australia sinking further. Sniper basically is dealing with the trauma of basically being like, I get to meet my parents! Oh my god, my parents are assholes! In like, a span of two minutes. In the span of like, ten minutes. We're, we're going through all the emotions when it comes to Sniper, all I'm saying. Yeah. And then Sniper gets shot. Three times. Oof. I had to wait a fucking year to find out what happened to him. I'm fine. That's the same. You okay? <laughs> no. Give me a moment. <laughs> I need a moment. Give me a moment. 
Blood in the water happened to, to give you an idea of what happened. I'm giving you an idea. So. Uh, the comic Blood in the Water, which is where Sniper gets shot, came out October 2nd, 2014. Okay? Got that in your little brain space? Old... Now, two comics came out, but they were filler comics mainly for, um, it, for events. <coughs> Blood Money, which was for the Halloween event, event with Marasmus and the Japanese Mafia. And the contract was basically uh, a TF2 getting a revamp and basically having the contract system, which I have never been a fan of, but meh. The comic, which basically continues the story of the main comic, came out in August 31st of 2015. I had to wait nearly a whole damn year to find out if Sniper was okay. I'm a big, huge fan of the fucking Sniper in TF2. See how much pain I was in for nearly a year. When a new comic would be announced and come out, we were all like, we're finally gonna find out. Yeah, no. Anyway, and in the end of Blood in the Water, you see this. They're back, bitches. The OG TF2 team. Except for the medic, he's missing. The OG TF2 med, the OG uh, Team Fortress Classic medic, because he's most likely dead. Because he was like ancient, according to the catch-up comic. But look, look, guys, look! There's a medic right there. He's back. Why is he on the enemy team? Why is Sniper dying? Where is the alcohol? Why, 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 why is the rum gone? I just mm. it was a fucking cliffhanger, and I hate it. <laughs> In the best way possible, right? Have I- do I have everyone still- did I go any- did, did I go off anywhere? Did anyone- So what happens next is a comic known as, um, Old Wounds, which is basically- <laughs> Ow. The next one that comes out is Old Wounds. I've never actually established the names of every these comics. I'm just talking and blathering as I go, which I shouldn't have, but I don't care. This is my fucking lore video. I can do what the fuck I want. Right, Survivor? Right, Cat? Thank you. So anyway, that was the end of basically Blood in the Water. And now you can see where the name comes from. There's blood. Snipers. In the water. He's dying. Anyway. I'm fine. <laughs> anyway, so basically what happens is in the Team Fortress Classic, the TFC, if you will, we're gonna call him TFC, Team Fortress Classic, basically captures and imprisons Sniper, Soldier, uh, Sniper, Soldier, Zana, Spy, Miss Pauling, Demo Man, and basically have them imprisoned. Now here's a cute little fun thing. Okay? A uh, soldier is currently getting basically interrogated. Basically it's established that their work the classic team is working for re working for gray men to basically try to take over Manco, which he hasn't taken over yet because of reasons. Still trying to figure those out. And basically they're trying to get information out of the team. Soldier's refusing and soldier is basically like you can't you know, you can't do the thingy, whatever. You can't get me to talk, blah, blah, blah. And here's a fun fact, and it's canon in this. And everyone thinks, oh, because it's canon in this, it's going to be canon for the other team. Team Fortress 2, Cl Team Fortress Classic, their pyro is a girl. And she is a sick, twisted fucking old... She is a sick, twisted little old lady, all I'm saying, okay? She is doing the torture. She is the only one doing the torture of the... <laughs> torturing, trying to gather information. The only one. Which means the team most likely trusts her abilities, which means she's a sick, twisted fucking lady, and I'm scared of grandma. Her name is Beatrice, and she's nice. <laughs> Not nice. Anyway, she is the pyro of the classic team, and people think, oh, that means that the pyro on the other team is not. I'm like, no, it just establishes that the classic team pyro is a woman. Now, shush. And they're trying to find the administrator, who apparently has the last of the Australia. As well as has other shit, most likely the contracts and deeds to Manco. If they have them, then they own Manco, I guess. I'm assuming. That's what I'm assuming here. I am also using hearsay in my knowledge of what I know from reading the shit. Right? Yeah. Uh, basically, Zana does one of the most badass fucking maneuvers any ever and kills Beatrice, uh, the, pyro, the TFC pyro, by herself. Bludgeoning is awesome. And... Soldier goes, how did you escape? Did you do the broken, the broken uh, finger trick? And she goes, oh, well, I broke something. Um, so uh, Zana uh, cut her own fucking hand off to get out, get out of the handcuffs. Wow. Oh. 
behold, badassery number three. And Soldier is basically like, oh, don't worry, you'll be fine, you'll get healed up, you'll be back to Canada, and I'll, you know, you, because Soldier is basically thinking it'll be just a simple fix, because, you know, Team Fortress has all the healing machineries and everything, and so basically Soldier thinks it'll be easy, right? Yeah, right. You know, not thinking that, you know, someone is currently not on the program for the healing. Which, I would like to point out, the respawn does not exist in this comic. You die, you die. Yep. Because they're no longer part of Manco, so they're not registered. No one is. Hmm. Just saying. So if death happens, it's finale. Kind of. <laughs> Scout. I'm concerned that the sniper got killed. Yeah, that's why everyone's like because there was no establishment of respawn. We all thought Scott Sniper was dead. Sniper's not dead, by the way. He's fine. Uh, head medic basically did his uh ungodly powers to basically bring back the sniper, and the sniper was dead for about three days. <laughs> And his back up. And that whole comic, I would like to point out, Sniper is walking around without clothes on. Thank you for this fine feast. This is why I'm not able to show a bunch of the comic pages from this comic. Because there's butts. <laughs> so many butts. <laughs> little butt cheeks everywhere. <laughs> Squishy little butt cheeks. <laughs> Squishy little butt cheeks. Uh, basically, um, oh, I'm trying to... I'm, I'm tongue-tied right now. Sorry. Um... So basically, Sniper is back from the dead. Yay! Sniper is fine. Yay! And basically, it's established that I'll strip and um, so heavy. Uh, so not heavy. So basically, Greymend is trying to basically get as much Australium as humanly possible. And Greymend had figured out that anyone who was there is a possibility that people's blood has Australium in it. Like people who have been exposed to Australium, which the TF2 team have because there's Australium weapons and everything. That there's potentially Australium within the blood, and basically makes these fucking robots that basically suck the blood out of the blood out of them. And they <laughs> yeah, it's nasty. Which basically leads to. The team getting attacked by these giant weird tentacle robots. And, oh, oh, I forgot a funny little comic page. I have to include this comic page because it's one of my favorite comic pages. Um, so, uh, first off, the death of the pyro, which was awesome. It involved explosions. It was badass. And, you know, Heavy and Soldier being cute little sweets, a uh, soldier and, uh, Zana being cute little sweethearts, sweeties to each other, being like, don't worry, babe, we'll get your hand fixed and everything. We care. You know, you know, the sweet, cute things that couples do that I don't care. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Stay, stay on target. Staying on target. Uh, while imprisoned, uh, basically... Oh, yeah, the, uh, the liver comic does happen in this comic, by the way. Behold the liver ah. comic. I don't know what I did for this. And, um, what else happens is, uh... Pauling and Spy, basically you figure out Pauling and Spy have some form of friendship with each other and basically like, I can't believe I'm dying like this. And Spy goes, I have half a, I have a cyanide pill in my, one of my molars. I'll give you half of it. <laughs> I mean, he is Spy. He is Spy. It's like, he, he, he's not be taken alive. And she's like, thank you. I do not want to die. He's like an idiot. Because Pauling's basically really upset because Pauling is one... A secretary who, yes, knows how to dispose of bodies and kill people. She didn't think it would get this big. And she's, like, getting overwhelmed. And so Spy's like, I will not let us torture us. In three seconds, I'm going to crack a cyanide molar. If you open your mouth, I'll spit half of it into yours. And hopefully, before my heart stops. <laughs> Which leads to this funny-ass panel. <laughs> also, Heavy charges in. Now, you are... Now, that's not actually the Heavy, that is actually Team Fortress Classic Spy. Uh, also, we get the establishment that Heavy, who is also known as Misha, his full name is actually Michael. Which makes sense, because Misha is short for Michael, or Michael. Yep. I use Michael because there's K's in there, and apparently my non-Jewish upbringing is kicking in. Uh, also, does this is this for the fun scene? Yeah, basically, and near the end of the comic, we get the whole... Uh, doing the whole uh, sniper basically getting revitalized and also uh, Grayman dies. Oh, finally. Yeah, finally. It took only a few thousand years. Uh, she's been, it's actually kind of funny because she wants, uh, Pauling wants to do like the really badass speech in front of it. It's like what, you know, 
I don't think you know what she's capable of, da da da. And you know, basically trying to intimidate Grey Men who died mid sen mid her sentence. And she's having a moment and, and Spy is like, uh uh Pauling, um, she's the, 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 the Greyman's dead. Greyman's dead. Greyman died like mid sentence. <laughs> it's like you it's like I don't have time for this. <laughs> basically It's like the the disrespect. Yeah, the disrespect Greyman has. So basically, now we get to the final comic that was released, because the seventh one never got released for this, and it hurts, and we'll talk about that afterwards. It's called, uh, what's it called? Naked and the Dead, I think? Naked and the Dead. There's a lot of nudity in this one, aka butt cheek, so I have to be very, very clever with my censoring right now. Anyway, you basically get the establishment in the beginning of the comic where basically Pauling is told by the administrator, I need you to grab the team and I need you to get all the Australium and bring it back to me. I need it. No, you're not allowed to ask. No, you're not allowed to ask any further questions. Just do what I say. I am your boss. Gives you an idea what the administrator's like, right? Yeah. Uh, the uh, the medic currently, the medic currently, is basically running around, dumping buckets of blood into people to heal them, so they don't die of blood loss from these robots. <laughs> this does not make sense in the real world, but remember. Medic is God! Well, not really God, but you get the idea. And basically, uh, Team Fortress Classic, the heavy of TF Classic, basically is like, well, our boss is dead, but I want to be immortal. I was promised immortality. And that's why the Classic team is actually going back to this. They basically want to be mercenar young mercenaries again, being able to kill people for money. That is kind of the established reason why they're doing this shit. They want to be young again. They want to basically make money. Which kind of can give you an idea of, like, a commentary about ageism in the workplace, but let's not talk about that right now. We're not going that deep. Um, when that- so basically Heavy's like, well, our boss is dead. Let's just continue it on so we can be immortal. And basically becomes the boss, and he is a very abusive bastard. I'm saying that as the nicest way possible. He's hot, but he's an asshole, all I'm saying. And, yeah. by the way- that's Dell's dad being all like, hey, do we really want to do this? Like, I mean, our boss is gone. This seems dangerous. And, um, oh, I forgot. Previous comic beforehand, Classic Heavy, which was this big old brute of a man. Basically, you want to know how Grayman dies? Go on. So Grayman is basically being very rude and brute rude to the mercenaries, which, by the way, never do. Um... And basically, he's like, you're just a bunch of brutish people, blah, blah, blah. The classic heavy basically gets mad. And uh, for those who don't know, the uh, immortality device that is on Greymond is basically... It's kind of like the thing on the spine of Isaac in uh, Death, Dead Space. Oh. It's like that. It's attached and fused to his spine. So, um, yeah. that got ripped out of Greymond. So, Greymond... Ye is, yeah. It's not full-on established graphic, but it's very heavily implied that the classic heavy just ripped the guy's spine out. Or at least the device connected to the spine, because we don't know how deeply fused that is with the spine. We just know it's on his spine. He just, like, ripped it out, Grayman dies. It's great! Yeah. Um, so that happens. He's like, I want to be immortal, and I want to live forever, I want to be a mercenary forever, I want to kill forever, I want to be forever young bullshit. Basically, that's classic heavy he just wants to keep killing all he cares about is killing yeah. Cla classic heavy only wants to kill only wants to make money he is like basic ass bitch nothing deep i just kill and make money and he just wants to keep doing it because now you could say oh it's because it's the only skill he has no he's a fucked up person in my personal opinion at least when i yeah. wrote him um and even dell's dad right here because it is fr it's fred cawhanger dell's dad it's established is like Maybe, you know, for one, you never killed the guy, you, you know, pointing out, dude, he didn't pay us first, why'd you kill the guy? <coughs> and now, so you're yelling at his spine and pointing out, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this? Right? And then, like, Heavy, uh, classic Heavy, basically, is being an abusive bastard, and he's like, you know basically pointing out, hey, I could take care of these robots, and basically, because pointing out, hey, these robots are going to come after us now. And, you know, I could make some sentry busters, and basically 
and most likely is trying to protect these people. And you can see there's a bit of humanity in, cla in classic engineer. And classic heavy is like, no, I want these people fucking dead. I'm like, okay. We kind of get where you lie on in the spectrum of evil. Thank you. Yeah. So that's all happening. And also, we get he uh, somehow Heavy comes back. Oh, yeah, Heavy comes back via parachute. Oh, uh, so basically, Maggie, Saxon Hale, Heavy, and Scout basically come back to where this fight is happening. This big, massive fight, which is on this base somewhere, which I can't remember where the base is. Because once again, we're trying to get the fucking Australian, because we need the fucking. We, we need the. <coughs> we, we need the. We need the, we need the MacGuffin. Yeah, we need the MacGuffin. Yep. Kind of important. There's. MacGuffin is needed. So they drop down via helicopter. They drop down via parachute, skydiving, badassery. Heavy does the superhero landing that we all know and love. Which you're like, nice landing. Bad for the knees, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. And basically, Saxon Hale, Heavy, Maggie, and Scout fight these robots and help them turn the tide. Yay! Um, where am I? And basically, you're dealing with, like, uh... Classic Sniper, who was the one who shot, oh, who shot, you know, current Sniper, and, you know, it was, like, being whatever. Ugh, this is where it gets, starts getting rusty for me. Uh, Sniper takes out the other Sniper, which was awesome, in a fit of g cool badassery revenge, while butt-ass naked, which I can't show y'all! <laughs> you might be wondering, Cat, why haven't you been showing some images? Um, nudity and blood! Oh, also there's this wonderful scene where Scout hugs Pauline and Pauline bleeds out- bleeds blood out of her eyes. <laughs> oh, that's... The... Poor Pauline. Pauline! Poor Scout. He just wants- it's like, he just wants... wants uh, reciprocation, but that's not happening. Yeah, Scout's like, Pauline, I'm- Just doesn't take the hit. You know what? I'm just glad you're okay. And also, Polly's like, I lost a lot of blood. Your hair looks great, though. Thanks. It's covered in my blood. <laughs> Basically, I mean, pointing out, like, Scout, time, place, now, not it. I mean, they, they, was that before, was that before, uh, the spy was able to squirt, was able to spit some cyanide? That's, this <laughs> is, po after. this is post-cyanide, this is post the cyanide thing, this is the next comic. Oh. Okay, I just want to make sure when she actually got some or not, because that would explain the bleeding. No, it's basically the robots who are attacking their bodies to try to extract any Australian that's in the blood, because the robots are basically uh, trying to extract Australian from the blood that is in the people of Australia. Oh, they're in Australia! That makes oh. sense now! God damn it. <laughs> well, I didn't know what the base was. No, 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 no not, not that, just the idea that they're... Of course the, of course the robots are... Just, it, this all makes sense with it to it, only itself. Yeah, uh, basically Heavy beats up with his sister again. He's like, why the hell are you here? And she's like, I'm engaged. <laughs> she's like really, really happy to see her brother. Right? She's like, brother, I missed you. I'm so glad you're alive. Heavy, where the fuck's your hand? Uh, I sawed off with some scrap metal to kill a woman who's torturing me. Heavy's like, this is good. I'm okay with this. And then he notices the ear necklace. Where did you get a necklace of human ears? Sister, no! He knows exactly what's happening, because Snowchurch is known to have necklaces of human ears. <laughs> I mean, that's how they were threatening him to not talk about work. Yeah. Was they, they threatened the heads of his severed, enemy, severed heads of his enemies. Yeah, so he's finally like, figured oh, it out. Trophies. And he's like, hello, brother-in-law. Good news, you're going to be a grandfather. He's going to impregnate me, brother! <laughs> Okay, establishing that is not how grandfathery works. It would be uncle. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, I know. No, I couldn't remember where the military base they were currently fighting in in the comic was. I knew that the Australian comes from Australia. I'm not that stupid, Fibnak. Anyway, I love Heavy Sister. She's she's me. <laughs> Anyway, Pauling is having a moment, uh, there's the whole, uh, there's some rumbles, don't ask. You know, Scout is trying to confess his feelings to Pauling, Pauling doesn't care. <laughs> Pauling is focused, you know, on the job at hand. Good Pauling, we love you. 
And in the process, uh, Maggie and Soldier, Maggie and uh, Saxon Hale are actually talking to each other, and potentially they might get back together? Question mark. And basically, they fight. Uh, basically, they're surrounded by robots. Heavy uh, Sol Saxon Hale and uh, Maggie drop down a shit ton of weapons, including Sasha. And basically, they fight all the robots. It's badass. It's awesome. Please enjoy the badassery. That is this. Yes. Sasha, I have missed your voice. <laughs> Basically, they're fighting robots. It's just man versus machine all over again. Please enjoy the splash page. And while this is happening, um, Sniper is basically deal. Uh, the TF2 classic Sniper is trying to take out Pauling, and Scout Sniper and Spy are basically sneaking around trying to take out the team that's in the building. Sniper, I would like to point out, is currently running around, thankfully, in a pair of pants that he loses while he's sneaking around, which is why I can't show those pages, because it shows his butt cheeks. God damn you, Twitch. Right? Um, and basically, the sniper, the classic sniper takes down the spy and basically is, like, doing his stupid, you know, the stupid villain talk that some snipers have to do before they're about to kill the guy and not do his job? Good news, Sniper does his job. And basically, Sniper lost his pants in the way and is also bleeding out because his stitches popped. And basically, Sniper is like, can I borrow some pants? And he's like, no, you are not borrowing my pants. <laughs> so you have the nakedness. Um, basically, there's a scene involving Medic and Demo Man. The Demo Man going, you can do all the shit. Why have you never healed my eye? And he goes, and Medic goes, oh, th there's a good reason for that. Because you basically lost your eye magically. Anytime we try to fix it, Bad shit happens. <laughs> Establishing some of the Halloween events are because of them fixing the eye. We had to remove that part of your brain that keeps remembering to do that thing can you, so you could stop asking us to replace your eye. <laughs> and and, and, and in, in my personal opinion, the best response to it is, um, fair enough, and continues drinking alcohol. And by alcohol, I mean, yeah, alcohol. Um, and, and even heavy, and medic is even like, just don't think about it or you'll hurt yourself. He thought about it. He hurt himself. Um, so classic, classic, uh, heavy is being an asshole and basically is telling medic to be like, listen, you're going to go back in your lab. You're going to figure out how this shit works and you're going to make me fucking immortal. And you know, basically... And you're not going to do anything stupid and try to kill me. And Medic is like, I could just kill you right here. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads to yes, Smash. Medic. medic basically smashing the face in of the guy. Which, um, you know, there's a badass fight that happens. And then, um, I can't show it. Heavy sna stabs the guy with a saw, with a, a medical saw. I, I have to, I have to describe shit now because I can't show shit. And, um, basically a fight happens. He Medic is doing pretty badass on his own, by the way. Which is kind of funny, because people keep making jokes about how Medic does needs heavy around, and everyone like, I don't think Medic needs heavy. I think Medic's doing pretty fine on his fucking own. Oh, look, a corpse. And then, basically, we have a badass... Basically, uh, Heavy is pissed off because Classic Soldier touched Medic. Medic and him are best friends, if not lovers. It's never been confirmed, but there's always been the inflammation by the fandom. I just think they're very... I don't care, to be perfectly honest. If they are a couple, good for them. If they're not a couple, whatever. If they're just best friends and bro brothers in blood, whatever. You know, bra battle bros, cool, whatever. I don't care. They have a very good friendship. It's guy love. It's all that is. Um, While this happens... Heavy sees uh, Medic get hurt and then shot. Medic gets shot three times. And basically that leads him going to hell and the whole him basically doing the fun soul thing that I mentioned earlier. Heavy is pissed. Heavy has activated his rage mode. Heavy is a barbarian. <laughs> yeah. uh, basically, Heavy is like, you touch doctor. Basically, badass heavy fight happens, which in which you know basically leads to this motherfucking awesomeness, which is an awesome page in my personal opinion. I love a lot of these pages. I'm gonna be honest. I am envious of this artist's work. Um, and while this happens, um, the I think 
soldier and the scout of the classic team, I can't remember exactly on my brain, are talking and, you know, questioning how, uh, becoming mercenaries. And, you know, do we really want to be mercenaries? You know, we could just do this thing and, you know, live our dream, da-da-da. Pyro overhears what the dream is. The dream's not good, I'm just saying. And Pyro's like, hello, motherfucker. And just destroys those two. <laughs> like, uh, Pyro. I love Pyro. Pyro's great. Fighting is still happening. Uh, Soldier and uh, Zana are covered in honey again and are butt naked fighting robots. I can't show these panels for obvious reasons. <laughs> I think I know the panel you're talking about. There's a lot of these. There's a lot of soldier panels. It's not, I mean, they cleverly censor it, but it's too much of a risk. Heavy, the two heavies are fighting. Um, basically, the heavy, classic heavy decides to insert the weird thing that makes him immortal inside his body to, you know, fight the newer, younger heavy. We're having scenes where basically uh, soldier, scout, uh, sniper, and spy are talking about shit. And then scout comes along. Yay! to go get the other two, right? Right. They found Scout in the hallway, shot in the liver. What is with this fucking team and shooting people in livers? So... Slowly bleed out, I guess? Yeah, I guess. I'm like, come on, if you're gonna be killing people, at least do it efficiently. Um, Scout is basically slowly bleeding to death and dying. And beforehand, Spy and uh, sni Scout and uh, Spy and Sniper are talking about like, you know, you really, you're about, we might die in this thing. You really should, you know, come clean with some shit, which means Sniper knows. Spy doesn't yep. want to because, you know, reasons, reasons. And like Scout had like a few fa comics beforehand. Scout had basically a memory slash dream of basically Spy and his mom together while Scout was a little baby. I just remembered that. And Scout is like, that is a weird-ass fucking memory. I mean dream, not memory. It's not a memory, it's a dream. Basically, you know. In denial. Basically. Um, and Scout, um... And so Scout is dying. And what happens is Spy decides to disguise himself as Tom Jones. You know, Tom Jones, who is dead in this universe. Why, I don't know! basically disguises himself kind of like Tom Jones and is trying to basically let Scout die happy. I'm like, there's one way you could have made Scout die happy was disguise yourself as a woman and say he's the hottest thing in Freaktown and that would have made him die happy. Right? Yeah. And like, you get an idea of kind of what Scout looks like as, without the mask, this is what people theorize what he might actually look like sans mask, but you know, no. And also we get to learn that Scout's name is Jeremy. Ain't that cute. And basically, Scout Spy has this whole moment where he's like, I've always been proud of you, Scout. You know, I've been proud of you. I'm proud of you, son. Established! It is canon. They are related. People are people are partying in the streets, and then other people are crying in the streets. Then you have this lovely moment in comic, which is very Ave Maria, if you will. It's very beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Huh. Um... Which leads to Scout going into heaven. Behold heaven. Behold God. <laughs> Which again could just be a hallucination. Also, apparently... So you know how I said there was a foosball table in heaven? Yeah. There are three foosballs in heaven. Foosball tables. Three of them. According to Scout... <laughs> three! Precisely three foosball tables. God damn it, Scout. Scout, your form of heaven is weird. And basically, it's established that, like, it's not time for you to go yet. You got more women to seduce and all that jazz. I'm like, yeah, Scout's having a fucking hallucination. We all know Scout's having a fucking hallucination. <laughs> and there's also a whole thing where it's like, we'll see you in, like, uh, what is it? Don't get the panel. Yeah, see you in 1987, which is allegedly where Scout's gonna die, allegedly. And more heavy... Hi. Uh, more, uh, heavy Zana, more soldier Zana fighting. Zana has now, has now basically attached onto her stump of a hand a shovel as a form of weapon to help fight. I would like that established. I would love to show you, but I can't because I forgot how much fucking nudity is in this damn comic. 
So, while this is happening, Pauline contact somehow was able to contact the engineer. Okay? Is everyone with me so far? Me. And she's like, hey, Dell, where the fuck are you? And Dell's like, oh, I've been with the administrator. Oh, no, sorry, he's been busy with something. He didn't say he was with the administrator. Let me just confirm and check. Oh, yeah, no, he says he's with her. Her being Helen. Okay? The administrator. Yeah. And she's like, you've been with the administrator all the time. You know, basically having one of those moments. And uh, also in the process, after the call, and he's like, no, don't worry, I'm taking care of her, da, da, da. Uh, in the process, uh, Zana basically goes, stop looking at my man. <laughs> Which, you keep staring at my husband. I would like to point out, her fiancé, who is naked, covered in honey, beating the crap out of robots. Kind of hard not to stare. Just say. And, like, it's kind of funny when you find out that later, like, the creator established that Miss Pauling is a lesbian. Everyone's like, I don't think Pauling was looking at Soldier. All I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little giggle, right? Um, so... That happens, basically, she's like, my man is a beautiful, husband, sexy man. If you try to touch my man in any form or fashion, I will kill you myself. I'm like, okay, Zana, come with thy titties. And Pauline's basically having uh, a meltdown, like, oh my god, can we just get this over with? And she's like, what's next? What weird thing's gonna happen next? Cut back to Sniper walking past, butt naked, soldier like, hi, hi naked S Sniper. Hey. <laughs> this is happening. Heavy and Classic Heavy are currently having a badass, badass, awesome, badass fight, which I can't fucking show. And uh, basically Medic goes to, goes to hell, talks to Satan, basically gets to go back to heaven, goes back to Earth, basically with the promise of a bunch of things. Now here's the funny things that happens with the, he with the he Medic, okay? Give you an idea. Medic comes back to life. Perfectly fine, don't question it, right? Right. And Heavy, and basically it's called Frankenstein, by Classic Heavy. I'm like, wow, how original. And he's like, could I trouble you for a moment? And he's like, how did you, is that a pen? At one point, yes, it was. More of an inductor, really. I'm terrible at naming things. Either way, it induces labor. What? <laughs> for those who don't know, Medic has been experimenting on the Classic team to help them stay young and viral. Allegedly. He actually has been putting baboon uteruses in the team. Wow. Oh. He has just invented a, some of them have more than one bamboo bamboo uh, uh, more than one uh, baboon uterus in their body. I think the scout had like six. Classic scout. Right? Mm -hmm. He just get, has a machine that will in induce labor. Now I don't know about you, but I know that labor is very very fucking painful. <laughs> I've never given birth, but I know, uh, from what I have heard, it basically is a pin to, in and basically points out that I have been doing this thing, I have been, you know, you know, it even points out going, I think I gave you triplets, classic, and you know, and it's, and it's kind of funny, and he's like, are you kidding? And he's like, of course I'm kidding. It's a pen! <laughs> Basically, <laughs> distracting Classic to get basically donkey punched by Heavy. Who basically gets dissolved and dies. Because he gets the immortal totality machine removed forcibly and also dies. Heavy and Medic have a moment. An awesome badass moment. Right? You know, badass moment of brotherhood. You know, mm -hmm. basically, it's like to have you back. It's been missing. And he goes, baboon, triplets, steroids, pregnancy pen. Only you could come up with the bluff that insane doctor. What is, what is that? This is actually the bamboo pregnancy and doctor pen. I simply couldn't get it in my medical kit in time. Three baboon uteruses. Oh, preposterous. The human body can just take maybe one, two baboons at most. Anyway, <laughs> click. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. There it is. <laughs> There's the mad size. Sorry, is that click? <laughs> Um, this is something, something, probably something, something about like that's the, the human body cannot handle that much blood going. Does that many organs at once? Yeah. Two pop, two probably is like your limit. <laughs> two probably like your limit. I don't know. Anyway, I would like to point out, click. The button was clicked. Someone is having babies right now. 
<laughs> um, and basically, Pauline sees classic, uh, classic heavy, you know, doing the da da da. They're basically the thing, and she's all like, "Hold on, we gotta get the panel." It's like, "Why are you doing this thing?" Blah blah blah. And she goes, and I quote, "We're Team Fortress, and you're dead." Ain't that cute? I like this. This is a cute scene. Oh. It's a cute scene. Basically, she got to have that cool, badass moment that all the movies have, right? Yeah. And then he dies. <coughs> no! While this is fucking happening, the administrator is basically with the engineer. The engineer makes a version, a very, a much more new version of the immortality device that basically uses very little Australia. And he even points out, going, "You only have enough for this much." We can last it as long as we can, da-da-da. And she's like, you know, upset because she wants it. And basically it's established that the administrator has had an obsession with Australia since she was a little girl. Basically, she's gone as long as she could, but she still craves the Australia. And she'll always want it. She's apparently wanted it since she was like a kid, right? And he points out, you know... <clears throat> It basically, you know, he's trying to do the whole all's well as ends well thing. And, you know, this is what happens. Basically, uses all the Australian, which he theorizes could have lasted her another six months to an hour because she basically used it all. And this is how the comic ends. She wants to end this thing once and for all. It's kind of funny how the freaking bat music is playing right now in the background, which is the dur -dur -dur, uh, the soldier music for death. She wants this con this to be conclude wants this to be done once and for all, to be concluded. Hmm. Now you're about to is ask. How long? Now, do the phrase "What happens next? What happens next?" Oh, what happens next? What happens next? We don't know. It ended. The last comic that came out was it. The last comic, The Naked and the Dead, came out January 10th, 2017. We are here in our Lord at the time of this video being recorded, October 15th, 2022. There has been no hide, nor hair, nor reference, nor nothing about this comic. There hasn't even been a comic to establish like new events happening. Ah. That's annoying. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Because the comic beforehand was meat versus match, which was basically a thing to help establish the uh, pyro versus heavy event. That was the last one before this one, but that doesn't count as the main storyline comic we're just focusing on right now. It never got finished. It ne now, there was allegedly rumors that there is potentially a script out there, but they never made it. The Team Fortress 2 team is, like, slimmed down to, I think, if I remember correctly last I checked, either I, at maximum five people. Those five people have been too busy, very hyper-focused right now on the bot situation in the game, and there hasn't been any artists. The original writer for this comic is no longer part of Team Fortress 2, the original artist as well. Oof. The original writer for the Team Fortress 2 comic also wrote, I think, Half-Life, and so... And he has spouted a few things here and there on his Twitter. That's where we got the whole Pauling is a lesbian thing. Um, this comic has never been continued. It has always been on this cliffhanger. The fans have been wanting the new comic to come out, the final comic. Hell, there are very well-known TF2 fan artists who are offering to do the labor to draw the comic themselves as long as they have the script. So we could have conclusion. There have been jokes about people pulling in National Treasure to get the fucking script. Just so we can have some form of fucking cl closure. Because this is a... F this is a good end... This is a good cliffhanger and we just want to know what happens next. We want to know what happens to Heavy's family. We want to know what happens to the soldiers themselves. We want to know what's going on. We want to know if classic engineer... If engineer... If the two engineers are going to have like a family reunion moment and talk. There's so many loose ends that have never been finished and we want this to happen but it hasn't happened and it fucking hurts that this comic has never been concluded it is a thing that the Team Fortress 2 fandom really wants to have done we just want this final comic we, we just want that 
I mean, we also want the game upkept and all that jazz and funny little shorts and ha-has. We also want that. Yeah. But we really just want to know what happens at the end of the story. Even if they just release the script and just, like, be like, fan artists, if you want to draw this, draw this, we would be fine. Yeah. We just want to that's know how it ends. An, that's annoying. I, I know that pain. Everyone makes jokes about how a Firefly can't get over how it got canceled in season one. You guys got a fucking movie. Even if that movie is fucking garbage, you at least got some form of attempt. TF2 hasn't even gotten that. We just have end. And due to Valve being so hyper-focused on other projects, aka the, the Steam controller, the VR shit, Dota, that game they tried to do, but everyone got pissed off. Be, uh, Anthem, not Anthem. It was something. It was like a card game. You know what I'm talking about if you're a Valve fan. I think so. They were working on so many other projects, and Team Fortress 2, while it is still a money maker and still viable money-wise, and has a very dedicated fan base, which even the voice actors for TF2 were shocked how dedicated we were, because... Uh, this is a story that uh, Gary Schwartz, the voice actor for Heavy, has shared many times at a convention, where he goes, I remember I did these lines for this video game, I needed to make money, da da da. You know, he does the Heavy and the Demo Man, right? And he remembered doing an improv thing at a group thing, like, five somewhat, a few years later, after doing those lines. Forgot about the story, forgot about doing that practically. And he did this Heavy voice, and someone pointed out, going, you sound like the Heavy Weapons guy. And he goes, funny, I voiced the guy named Heavy Weapons guy. And she's like, Team Fortress 2. And basically, that is how he found out how much Team Fortress 2 still was very popular and had an impact. And that was years ago. So, like, the voice actors are very aware of how much the fans love this game, this community, and this happiness. And are also very sad that we haven't gotten our conclusion. Or, you know, gotten the love that we used to get. Which is kind of sad. And now I'm sad, and I want a cookie. Are you a, are you a pumpkin cookie survivor? Can I can I nibble on the pumpkin for a bit? I'm gonna take that as a no. Anyway, the fandom is loved, and when the bot issue happened, you could see how much TF2 was still loved to this day. Where even the voice actors were like, "Hey, Valve, what the hell?" Robin Atkins Downs, for a good while during 2020, was doing medic videos, cosplaying as the medic, doing funny little medic routines. Um, the sni uh, Ellen McLean, voice actress for The Administrator, still does, El still does lines for that, as well as the lines for GLaDOS, but let's stick to the TF2 right now. Her husband, who voices the sniper, also does funny little sniper routines. There is actually... That happened this year for a games convention, a series of videos known as Quest for Sandwich, which is the voice actors of, which is Ellen McLean, Robin Atkins Downs, John Patrick Glory, uh, and uh, Gary Schwartz going off to find Sandwich. And it's really cute. And like, you can see how much the, at least the voice actors know how much we love TF2. And you can see there is massive love for TF2. And I would really, really love if Team Fortress 2 could at least get the final comic, because we just want that. We just want to know what the, how the story ends. And it would be great. And I would love it to... I would love to know what happens. I'd, I'd love to... There's a lot of great things in Team Fortress 2. You can see where some of my fucking humor comes from via TF2. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to talk about the shorts. Expiration date, which is one of the best shorts, at one of the best shorts ever, which is really funny, which has the mutant bread monster in it, which I like to make jokes saying that the writers basically have massive gluten allergies. But the problem is Valve themselves, and I'm going to talk about the backstage of Valve right now, they work on a thing called Valve Time. They have what is known as rolling desk policy, where basically it's a great way to prevent burnout in theory and on paper, but reality, it, it doesn't. It, it really doesn't. It basically means people jump from one project to the other and other projects will be ignored by the wayside, which is what happened to TF2, which is fucking sad. Team Fortress 2 really relies on the fan base and it can show sometimes. When new established cosmetics are made, it's all cosmetics made by fans, not by the people themselves. They rely on us and it's kind of sad. And I, once again, would love to get 
the comic and I would love to get more TF2 content so I can just gush about it and hang out with TF2 fans and talk about all the fun things because I have I'm still in a few TF2 servers we're not as active as we used to be but we still hang out and I remember back in the day when the new comic was released or the new uh, short came out we would be gushing and excited taking screen grabs dissecting things pointing out tiny details and I just want to have that again it's a thing I miss, like, horribly, and I know it's most likely just a part of nostalgia, because I just, I remember the community of TF2, and the community, the part of community that I was a part of was really great. You'd had other players helping other players learn the game. You had, I remember when I was in TF2, when I played, there was, like, a new kid learning how to play, and there was this one a-hole in the group who was just basically being rude as fuck to the kid. And, like, everyone on the server was like, fuck you, dude. He's new. Let's teach him how to play this game instead of just being a jerk. That's what the community for TF2 for me was like. We were very friendly and helpful and very nice. It was a family thing. Um, I still have friends who were TF2 nerds who I've had back when I used to be very active in the Team Fortress 2 t Tumblr community, and I'm still friends with them. Team Fortress 2 is very deep and close to my heart, and I feel like I did not give the best explanation that is possible for the lore and showing my love, and I could try it again another time, maybe, and do something much more organized, but I don't care. I think it's a very me thing where I just blather on about TF2. And I just... I really love this... I really love TF2. I really do. It is very close to my heart, and I really wish I did more Team Fortress 2 based things here on stream and made more Team Fortress 2 content, but it's sometimes very hard. Um, I hope maybe one day I could do some Team... I did a Team Fortress 2 stream a, long, a while ago with some friends, but I don't know if I want to do it again anytime soon. I haven't decided yet, but again, I'd love to do some TF2 stuff. TF2 is very dear to me. I love Team Fortress 2. I am laughing at the o I, I have I cosplayed as the medic like I've established and I once made shot pot I did some funny pot shots which was agreed with with the cosplayer for mercy pointing out how their fan base basically doesn't know the concept of kill the healer first which was a thing that TF2 figured out instantly you know uh, it's, uh, I feel old <laughs> oh gamepedia I didn't say I was the best TF2 player I just said I was a good player I, I have fond memories of me cosplaying as the medic, basically having a good time at conventions, doing my medic voice, and doing lines that weren't from TF2, but very much sound like the medic because I was a hyper obsessive. And it's a, it's a very, it's a fun thing. Like I remember going, oh, you think that the reason why the fans left me, left me fa this fandom is because of more shipping opportunities in Overwatch. Oh, my friend, I have been in so many heavy sandwiches, it's not even funny. I have looked into the eyes of God and spat in them. That is why I can do what I do. And all of the fun, fun times I had as, t as a TF2 fan. And I miss them. I miss them dearly. And can I get back to that one day? Who knows? Um, I love TF2. I think I've, I think I've said that like 15 times. Take a shot. Um, And I want... I, I just, I love, it's a very close thing to my heart, and I, one day, might do more TF2 content, I might, I don't know yet. It's, it's really hard, because, like, I love TF2, but the pub servers can be kind of a dickhole now. And anyway, back to Overwatch. I love making fun of Overwatch players, by the way. <laughs> I will admit to that. And now I will do the one thing I've always wanted to do. Ha 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 ha, TF2 lasted longer than Overwatch. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> anyway, I'm blathering now and I'm gonna just get get this done and over with. I'm gonna send you guys off to someone who's having a special stream. Um, hold on, let me just check if they're still fucking streaming. Uh, are they still streaming right now? Because I was supposed to be a part of a little event with them and I kind of didn't know how long this was gonna last. Uh, hold on, let me see if they're still streaming. Uh... Ah, Racky, there it is. Uh, Racky is doing a Goose Goose Duck stream, and I'm supposed to be part of that collab, and I did mention I was going to be a little bit late, so hopefully... Wait, is Max streaming? Max's not streaming right now. 
It's not streaming right now. Mac, you better not be streaming right now, mister. Oh, yeah, Codex, are they're doing the king in yellow. And also Survivor is doing the... Oh, God. So many people. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Um, I'm going to just send you guys to Racky because I kind of promised I would send you guys off to Racky. So I'm going to send you off to Racky. Uh, Racky, Coyo, Racky, Racky. Oh, God, please have an easy name to spell. Who's currently playing Goose Goose Duck? <laughs> and um, let me just get this going. So let's get this going, and I hope everyone has a good time. Be good people. Cat is gonna make these big sad for a fandom. Yeah, welcome to heck. Anyway, uh, the vod is gonna be by the way on Twitch on YouTube later. I'm gonna have to do some edits, of course. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the TF2 stream, lore stream. Have a good day. Be good people. Please don't break on me today. I don't know if I'm gonna be in there yet. I'm gonna like do some self care. But see you guys later. Okay, guys. Come on, right, right now. Go, 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 go. Go. There we go. Stop streaming. Bye-bye.